In this video, I'm going to show how to debug a problem that is exposed with a version of R that you do not have in your system. In my case, I'm using R4.1 uh, R in my local system. Uh, and the problem that I see that I need to solve and, and, and debug is exposed with version of R uh, that are older than 4.0. Uh, the motivation is this. I'm working here on a pull request, and I see that in the checks, I get one error. Uh, that refers to filter getting um, an object that is not a data frame, it is a matrix or a list. So uh, what I noticed here is that the checks are all green in uh, versions of R, uh, like R4.0 uh, and older. Uh, so I get green checks with the release version of R on Macs, on Windows, and on Ubuntu, also on the development version of R, and Ubuntu, and also with the old release of R, which is uh, R 4.0, but uh, I do get errors in anything that is older than that, like 3.6, for example, and older. So obviously the problem I need uh, to debug needs an environment that exposes that problem, uh, and in my local system, what I have right now is R 4.1. So if I try to run my test here, um, I won't get any of the errors that I see on continuous integration. So instead, I jump to, uh, you know, there's a couple of approaches that I could use. The approach I'm going to be showing right now is uh, that of using RStudio Cloud because it is very easy to, um, uh, to set up, basically. So um, in RStudio Cloud, I have actually created a, a, a project that I called Home, um, and I set it up to have a bunch of things that are useful in the longer term, usually, you know, you could think of our studio cloud projects as um, as throwaway projects, uh, maybe. Uh, but um, in this case, I have set up this project called Home, and here I set up my uh, R environment file that has my credentials to log into GitHub. I have you know my my favorite things in our profile. Uh, and here is where I also have my R libraries. And here is where I set up, um, I cloned the, the package that I'm going to be working on and debugging. So notice here that I am not using the default um, R version, which is usually the latest that you see here, the, the one at the top of this list. Instead, I'm using a version of R that will expose the problem that I'm trying to debug, and I'm using 3.6, 4.3. So having done that, uh, and now if I run the, uh, the tests, let's pop up the uh, command uh, navigation bar uh, and type run test for a package, uh, we will see that the situation here is very different to what we saw in my local system. Now I do see that error uh, that refers to non-applicable method for filter applied to an object of class matrix or uh, list. Okay, so that is a super first step in debugging the problem. Of course, uh, let's go to the project that we need to work with. Um, so what am I not? Am I there? Okay, I am there because I see that that's my directory. So what I need to do here is go to working directory. There you go. So this looks more natural. Um, all right, so now the process of debugging is uh, not precisely what I wanted to show. I wanted to show basically what environment, how you get an environment that helps you um, reproduce problems with a version of R different to the one that you have in your system. But for the sake of uh, completion, let's actually do explore this problem. I see that this comes from the file trajectory, um, and uh, I've been you know, playing with this for a bit before, so what I'm going to do is pop up uh, that file. But I noticed that you know tracking that error um, trajectory, so it's exposed in the test file test plot trajectory here in file in line five, for example. You know that should reproduce the problem. So let's first load everything. Let's make this a little bigger, by the way. Um, uh, so this line number five should draw the error, and there it is. So now let's trace this back to where the error is coming from. Um, so we see, we see, we see um, here. This code looks very much like what we saw before in continuous integration with a call to pool, a call to filter. Um, 
somewhere here I saw something like that. Well, I can't find exactly what I wanted to show right now, but the um, uh, long story made short, I know that you know, I, I kept tracking this uh, problem a moment before and noticed that um, the issue is exposed, um, you know, starts here in prep trajectory. And I detected that this call in particular, R bind, um, is the one that is problematic. I'm gonna throw here a browser to show you uh, the difference between calling rbind and calling dplyr uh, bind rows. Um, let's first start here and let's later fix the problem. So I'm gonna load this, clear my console, and now run uh, the line that will throw the error so that the browser, the debugger uh, is triggered. And now if I run this rbind command, um, notice that our bind, if it gets what here is a data frame, uh, and this other one is also a data frame, but notice that it is a group data frame, and that seems to be the problem in R older than uh, 4.0. Uh, when I pass that to our bind, uh, what I get here is this, you know, it looks a lot weird, right? So what's happening here is that what I have is a, an object of class matrix and not a data frame. So if instead I did that with deep layer by rows, I would get the expected um, data frame. So that would be my solution to this problem right now. So that would have been, uh, yeah, that is the, the solution that I would you know, commit and push to the repo. Um, but well, summarize, summarizing um, rstudio.cloud is one way in which you can access different versions of R. Um, one thing that I didn't mention is also the platform where I'm running this. Um, So let's explore. We are now running on Ubuntu 20.04.2, uh, which is uh, none of the platforms that we have here, but close enough. So it looks like uh, the problem was obviously not related to the platform so much as we said before, but it was related to the version of R. So just with the newer version of Ubuntu, but the correct version of R that would expose the problem, we were able to reproduce it. Um, so yeah, that's all for now. I'm going to be showing another video soon about how to do the same thing on um, with a Docker container. Thanks, see you next time.